From the news team at LinkedIn, I'm Jesse Hempel, and this is Hello Monday. Welcome back to the reopening series. This week, we're tackling the second of our six big questions about what we want from work as we come out of the pandemic. Our topic today, what should my office look like? For this conversation, we decided to call in some LinkedIn colleagues, Jackie Goldberg and Leah Smart. They're real life friends and they have their own podcast called In the Arena. When we all worked at the Empire State Building, the three of us would get together for coffee Not because we work directly together or anything, but because we all liked audio. And once the quarantine began, we kept doing it on Zoom. Jackie and Leah's quarantine experience was so different than mine. I mean, I think a lot of you know that I was home with my wife and my toddler and more recently a baby. And I thought I would just never be alone again. But Jackie and Leah, they each lived alone in studio apartments in Manhattan. Those early days, they were quiet. Anyhow, the last time we caught up, both of them had left New York. Jackie was in Florida. Leo was in Oregon. So now it's summer and our offices are reopening again. We've entered the great reshuffle. That moment where everyone everywhere is trying to figure out what their work lives will look like. Here at LinkedIn, we've got a lot of choice. So today I'm going to talk to Jackie and Leah about how they figure out where their work will happen. Let's start by going way back to March 2020. That's when we all got the email. Please stay home. Here's Leah. I worked in my New York City apartment, which I have now dubbed as the cocoon. I was by myself for most of, actually most of the 15 months. Um, I did spend a little bit of time, you know, when this first started, it was like, okay, how do I get a little bit of time away so that I have something to anticipate? So I was upstate. Um, I was in Boston visiting friends. Um, I was in California visiting family. But uh, for the most part, I was in my apartment in Manhattan and Upper West Side for the majority of the time. And during that period of time, If you had to give your office a a score on a scale of one to 10, where one is I can barely get anything done and 10 is like, this is the best office I've ever worked in, what would it be? (laughs) It depends on what point you're asking about, Jesse. I think the first, probably like most of us, well, for me at least, it was this like, oh my gosh, finally I don't have to get up and get dressed for work. This is the best. And then I would say it probably leveled to somewhere around a seven I felt really good about the space I was in. For me, it was it was about, um, you know, I'm no longer in that space now, but it was really about the fact that I felt kind of, I mean, you live in Manhattan, we all have. I felt crunched into this little space. And so my office was my living room, was my kitchen, was basically my apartment. Right. <laughs> I really feel you on that. And so Jackie, <laughs> where were you for the first part of the, the pandemic? What was your office like? Yeah, so... Pretty similar to Leah, I lived in New York City um, in a studio apartment, 400 square feet, and it was everything. It became my gym, my where I slept, and that was my office. And I was there pretty much the entire pandemic other than the summer, which um, was really nice. Got to spend a few weeks upstate in the Catskills with my family. Um, Leah and I actually went to the Poconos for about 10 days upstate. So Together, definitely... Def- Together, yeah, and two other we friends. Did. Yeah. I forgot yeah. that one. Definitely felt like, you know, I was on the road a little bit more during the summer, but then, you know, once fall came back, was back into that apartment. Um, and, you know, on a scale of one to ten, um, it was it was pretty tough, you know. I'd say my mindset really had to stay positive from the get go since, you know, early March when we realized we were working from home for longer than anticipated, but even with a positive mindset and even with being productive, right? Like I definitely was productive. Um, I thrive on energy of people and it was tough being alone without that human vibe around me. It was, it was tough. So I would say it was a five on average. Some days were great because I was able to do things like work out during the day or throw my laundry in, um, cook my own meals for lunch. But, um, you know, I, I don't know if I would replace that entirely with, with what I would get from seeing people all the time, physically. 
It's funny because Jackie and I would talk and she was like, I remember Jackie, I think it was like April. You were like, I'm going to go insane. And like, that was such a, it was such an interesting thing to see the difference of like, for me, I was like, yes, like I get to be alone. I realized I was an introvert. Mm -hmm. Like I had all these revelations. I was, you know, doing everything by myself. And for Jackie, it was really hard because, because of how much she thrives on the energy of people around and having that office. And, you know, if, you know, anyone who's listened to our podcast or even met her, it's like, she's very spirited about the things that have to do with other Mm -hmm. people. And for me, I'm like, I could be in a cocoon for for a year, apparently. And it was really interesting (laughs) to see how our personalities played a role in the way that we lived and the way that we we looked at our new office space. And yeah, we, it, it was after the first week, I said, how am I going to do this for three weeks? Because that's what we thought it was going to be at the time. Mm-hmm. I said, how am I going to do this? How? I, I was shocked. I didn't even think I would be able to survive three weeks. And fast forward 15 months, I'm in a very different place right now. <laughs> I just remember those early days. And I've said this before on the show, like the whole change that was foisted upon us and how my experience of the change was week one, I was so angry. I was like, and rageful and also confused about how this could work. Like, life couldn't possibly really be this way. <laughs> and then week two was a learning week. It was, okay, well, okay, I guess we're doing this, so how do we do this? And then week three mm. was the week that I landed and was like, okay, well, here's the new normal. This is this is how it works, right? Yeah. yeah. So we travel through the year, and again, today we're really talking about offices. There was this moment that we had a call scheduled and it was recent. It was just a couple months ago. We had a call scheduled. We jumped on the call and I was like, guys, how's Manhattan? And you were like, I don't know. Neither of us are there. So (laughs) (laughs) tell me how and when each of you left Manhattan. Jackie, start with you this time. So I remember exactly. It was November in New York. Uh, It was right around the election. So heightened emotions to say the least. And I started to feel fearful of the winter, the impending cold. And I will say, I remember saying to friends, colleagues, family back in March of 2020, I'm so thankful that we're approaching spring and summer and going through this pandemic because I felt like if we were in November and we were approaching the winter, it just would have been so much harder because you're cooped inside the whole time. And so that feeling that still existed come November and remember you know, in the U.S. and New York, cases were spiking going into the winter. And I was scared for the winter and being cooped up in my apartment. And so I had this idea, I want to go someplace warm. I haven't gone on a plane during COVID, but let me just do it. Like, I'm like, I'm by myself. I do have my dog, but there's really no one else that I need to be mindful of. I know that's (laughs) sad, but it was just me. So um, I called my friend and I said, I'm going to, I'm going to tr- book a trip to Florida. I'm going to spend like a month in Florida. And she goes, I want to come. And so we booked an Airbnb in Miami for three and a half weeks in December, like into January. After two days of being in Miami and being in the sun, in the warmth, just people living life, it, what it felt like for COVID, very different from New York, felt okay. I was like, I want to come back here for an extended period of time. So I knew my lease in New York was up at the end of February. And after a few days in Miami, I said, I'm going to give it a few days when I come back to New York to really decide if I want to do this. And I got back to New York. And two days later, I booked a three-month Airbnb, which I've already extended one month. Um, So I'm now on my final month in Miami. And that was my story. And I could not be happier with my decision. Wow. Uh, That is a big, bold move. And I love the symmetry of the shift. Uh, The first three weeks of working from home um, caused you to shift the way that you were going to think about working from home. And the first three weeks of working from Miami caused you to shift in a very positive way um, your office down to Florida. So you're there right now while we're speaking, Jackie. You have a plan to come back, right? So I had always planned to come back in July. And so I do have an apartment set up. I'm moving to Brooklyn. I'm super excited about it. And this has changed the way that I think about how I want my 
work style to be moving forward because I've now fallen in love with a city where I can see myself living, maybe not permanently, but maybe someday permanently and who knows, right? And there's a question mark there, but I've built a life here for myself. I have a social network, I have friends, I have people who I've really, you know, come to love. And so leaving that entirely doesn't feel like that's in the cards for me. I think the most interesting thing about that is that in our pre-COVID life, our office would kind of dictate that decision for us, Mm -hmm. where you needed to report to work every day would dictate, for the most part, not entirely, where you chose to live. Um, But now all of that's up for renegotiation. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but I want to hear first, Leah, about where you are. I am in Bend, Oregon right now, which my friends who live here would say, please don't tell anybody about this place <laughs> because it's it's been a bit of a secret, but it's now the third fastest growing city in the country. But I remember Jackie had said, you know, I'm going to go to Miami. And I was like, oh, maybe that's what I should be doing. And I sort of opened this new window that hadn't been open for me. Like I hadn't cons- really considered leaving New York. It, in my gut, Miami didn't quite feel right to me, but the idea of leaving New York did. And my best friend has been trying to convince me to come to Bend for six years. I won't go into all the details, but I feel like I got all the signs I needed that this was the place for me to be. And I said, you know what? My lease is up. Everything is going into storage and we'll see what happens. We're going to take a quick break here. And when we come back, Leah will reveal if she really ever plans to return to New York. And we're back. Leah Smart and Jackie Goldberg, today's guests, got out of New York without ever really needing to leave their virtual offices. It all happened on Zoom. It helped make them a lot happier. But now offices are opening back up again. So I asked Leah, what's your return plan? I don't know. Right now, there's no like emotional pullback to New York yet. Um, Also, I'm like a magnet back to New York. So (laughs) at some point, I'll end up there again. It's just questionable when that's going to be. It's just incredible to see someone who was like, I'm never leaving New York. This is where I (laughs) am going to be the rest of my life. Find happiness in a different lifestyle in a completely different place across the country. It's wild to discover different things that you didn't know can make you happy. I think the thing that's coming up too is, It's a different way of looking at how I live my life, you know, how we all live our lives and where we live our lives and for how long we live there. And is it okay to be a little bit more nomadic? You know, for me, I I don't want to jump from place to place. I I like communities, but can I do a little bit more of that than I used to? So for each of you, like we're in a period now inside LinkedIn. We'll talk about LinkedIn because all three of us work here where the offices are starting to open up again. I went to the lunchroom today and it was full of people sitting in twos and threes chatting over lunch that was given out at the buffet, just like olden time, guys. Ancient times, you mean. (laughs) Pre-pandemic. So how does that feel for you all? Do you guys have colleagues who are starting to see each other in person? And does that impact the way that you are working with them and with each other? So I manage a team of nine at LinkedIn. And when we got our first email saying, you know, doors are opening June 4th for, you know, limited capacity, here's the process you need to go. There was a quick team chat about when can we all go in at the same time? When can we find a time for all of us to see each other in person? A lot of excitement, really just to see colleagues, to experience what the office is like. So we're working towards that as a team. And if not all of us can get in at once, that's okay. But I think to have some people meet would bring a lot of joy to others. I have not yet experienced what it's like where I'm really working as the person in the remote side with multiple people in a conference room or multiple people at work. For me, that's um, something that's really intriguing to me to see how that dynamic will be with one person being remote or or maybe a small handful while other people are together in a room, right? I think that's the biggest question mark of what will collaboration look like? What will space look like for people to voice their questions and all of that? And it's not something we didn't have in the past, so it's not super foreign, but times have changed and the way we live has changed. And I wonder if we'll be a little bit more attuned to the people on the screen than we were in the past because we've all felt it. We've all experienced it in our own ways this year. So there's a lot of question marks in terms of 
what this will bring. But I will say there's a lot of joy in, and excitement in, in going back. How about for you, Leah? I mean, so what's interesting is I work in learning and development, and I'm the only person in New York in our office who works in learning and development. So I have always been the person on the other side of the screen, <laughs> uh, funny enough. So it's this is like nothing really changed when COVID happened as far as my team, except they all became me. So we all became people on the other side of a screen, which was sort of interesting. You know, not surprising based on what I've shared with you about wanting to be alone in the winter in New York, but I'm not really excited to go back to the office right now. And I'm kind of surprised to not be. I think it will shift as like, you know, we start seeing, I start seeing more pictures of people going in and posting them on LinkedIn, but I'm not as excited Yet, it was actually anxiety-provoking for me to see stage four rather than exciting. That's interesting. Jackie, you left a studio apartment in Manhattan. You are coming back to an apartment you already have in Brooklyn. As you prepared your new home, even though it's in the city that your office is in, did you do things differently than you you might have if you knew that you were going to go into an office every day? Oh, 100%. And with Leah, I'll, I'll say this one thing is like five days a week feels so too many days to go into the office, right? So um, preparing my home, my future home in Brooklyn, um, I've really given thought, obviously, to what desk I'm getting, which is for sure a standing desk. Already have it picked out, of course, to match the decor in my apartment and the placement of the desk and being near a good grocery store. Like I've mapped out routes. I did not cook pre-pandemic. That was the, my silver lining of COVID was that I love to cook. I love to go grocery shopping. I love trying new recipes. It brings me joy. And I'm excited that I now have a kitchen where I've already picked out all my new kitchen supplies, haven't ordered stuff yet because I have some time. But yeah, I'm for sure designing a space that feels like a home surrounded by the activities that bring me joy that didn't pre-COVID, and that I also can feel really comfortable in spending my, let's say, nine to five, a handful of days a week, at least two to three, for sure. One thing that is just so interesting to me about what is just up on the horizon is that just as when the pandemic happened, we couldn't know in advance how work was going to happen. We had to just live into it. We had to figure out by falling forward and being frustrated what was going to work for us. But what is really confusing about this time is that we don't have the external driving force of a pandemic to force the behavior change. But we do have a situation in which both companies, employers, and individuals, employees are going to have to figure out what the new rules of work and work life and offices are. I'm just curious. I would love for you guys to just think with me a little bit about like, what some of the things are that we have yet to discover about how work is going to work. What a lot of people don't know is human behavior, how to know what people need, how to create space for people to ask for what they need, how much more we're going to have to bring, you know, emotional intelligence and self-awareness and other awareness to the forefront so that we can actually notice what's going on for people around us. It it's sort of feels like in some ways, how do we let people choose their own adventure within the, you know, the, the, the kind of guardrails of work? That is, I think, a curiosity for most. I don't feel like it's an anxiety yet. I think right now, most people are still in the feeling of people are excited to get back to the office. But what I think will happen is as we creep, we'll see, ooh, that didn't work. Here's what I'm learning about people, right? Instead of, you know, we've only had to focus on the productivity of the business and fantastically we work at LinkedIn. So there's, there is this culture that we have, but I think it's going to ask us to step it up a bit around how we, you know, engage with people and, and interpersonal relationships and our own self-awareness. You know, one of the things that's pretty profound to see right now is how much input employees have in these conversations. One could even argue this is a worker driven conversation in a lot of professions. You have studied people in your in your work lives, in in your passions. Do you think we would have gotten here anyway? I think this catapulted us here. The shocking thing to me has been how much, you know, none of us are in school, none of us are at college age, but how much the idea of a profession and going to college has sort of started to get turned on its head. And I think that was already happening, right? Student debt was already increasing. People were already starting to ask, do I go to college? Do I not? 
because I can become an entrepreneur, right? I can run my own business. And so I think we were heading there anyway. I think this forced us all there. And I think it forced a generation there that may not have gotten there because we all have been in the workplace and maybe had COVID not happened, we would have never questioned what it looks like to live our lives differently, to you know decide where and when we want to work because it was just the conditioning we had. And now we're with this group of younger people who have a lot more freedom than we perceive we have. We're all re-asking the question. So I, I guess I see it as like a catapult, but it probably would have come anyway. It just would have taken mm-hmm. more time. I agree. I There are companies that have been remote only for a long time. And slowly with the millennials and the generation below, depending on your age, um, we're seeing entrepreneurship rise across the board, right? And with entrepreneurship comes this freedom to live anywhere, work anywhere. And so I, it was on the rise already from my understanding and interpretation, but COVID was something that came smack out of seemingly nowhere and affected everyone, everyone globally. And so to say that this catapulted, of course it did. And I do think it would have happened anyway, but it would have taken a much longer time. So y'all, when are we going to get our physical coffee together again, the three of us? (laughs) (laughs) One of the things, Jesse, you always say about our podcast is it's like sitting at the lunch table. And when you said the coffee, Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I do miss that. You know, like what is, we've been doing a lot of virtual lunch tables. So before 2022, how about that? (laughs) That's that would too be long. my commitment. We get, this is this is on Leah. We need to get her back to her her New York State, her home. <laughs> Find me an apartment, and I I will be there. <laughs> you just heard from my colleagues Jackie Goldberg and Leah Smart. Check out their excellent podcast. It's called In the Arena, and you can find it wherever you listen to your podcasts. So this week's homework: I want you to pick up that journal again. Set the timer for 15 minutes, and and this is important. I, I want you to write for the entire 15 minutes. Describe your ideal office, from the place to the furniture, to the people with whom you share it, to the frequency with which you visit it. Now, I want you to imagine when you do this that there are no limitations to what that workspace and that work time look like. Sarah, Michaela, and I will be doing this too. And if you want to share your vision with us, we'll meet to discuss it at this week's Hello Monday Office Hours. We'll go live as usual Wednesday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern. We'll be on the LinkedIn news page. You can find us by following LinkedIn news or emailing hellomonday at linkedin.com for the link. Now, every now and then we share a review here in the credits. And while I was out, Calla Hunt had left us a lovely one. So I'm going to bring our producer extraordinaire, Sarah Storm, out to share it. Now, Calla, if you're listening, drop me a line. Let's have a call. I'd love to share whatever I know about LinkedIn that might be helpful or just generally to get your ideas for the show. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Jesse. Okay, so what did Kella have to say? So she let us know that our recent episode around COVID anxiety really resonated with her. She said that I shared this specific episode with five of my closest friends because I thought it was monumentally helpful. Thank you for what you do. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Kella. Uh, You know, the show is not for our listeners. It is our listeners. We appreciate you. Get in touch with me, Kala, here at hellomonday at linkedin.com. And Sarah, next week is our third big question in the reopening series, and it's a good one. That question is, how do we talk to our colleagues again? I'm so excited because I, I, I... It, I need it. I think we all need it, right? Like, it's amazing how as soon as we started going back to the office, everything changed, even though we've been seeing each other over Zoom this whole time. And like, we're in the office once or twice a week. Maybe. Right. Well, but here's the thing. Like, some of us have been seeing each other, but really, I only see the people I directly work with. And I was the, the first time that I like made small talk with someone that I just hadn't run into in 15 months. It was it was really super awkward. <laughs> I became such an awkward possum when I walked in the front door. I think the first couple of days, it was really hard not to cry. It was like, these people do not necessarily know you or can't recognize you through the mask. Like, just be, just be chill. And like, I did, I had no chill, Jesse. I was just so excited, but it has made it hard to converse a little bit. Like, do we hug? Do we not hug? How much do we talk about what the last year has been? This is why, everyone, we are bringing you Esther Perel. She is the person to help us all figure out how we are going to communicate with our colleagues around work and on other topics once again. Esther Perel is 
one of the best and certainly one of the most well-known relationship therapists. That's what she does. And I'm going to confess that mostly when I've listened to her podcast, I've listened to her dissect people's marriages with them. But frankly, like dissecting our relationships with our work wives and our work husbands and all of the people we work with is just as confusing right now. So it's going to be great. (laughs) But listen, Sarah. Yes. Since we have you. Yes. Want to read the credits? Absolutely. Hello Monday is a production of LinkedIn. The show was produced by me, Sarah Storm, with help from Taisha Henry. Joe DeGiorgi mixed our show. Florencia Iriondo is head of original audio and video. Dave Pond is our technical director. Michaela Greer, Samantha Roberson, Carrington York, and Victoria Taylor help us tell these stories. Our music was composed just for us by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. Dan Roth is the editor-in-chief of LinkedIn. Your host is the one and only Jesse Hempel. We'll be back next Monday. Thanks for listening. Hey, you're pretty good at that. Thanks. I I like that flourish, the one and only bit. Maybe I should add that. (laughs) Maybe you should. (laughs) Um, I'm glad you enjoyed it.